Hello my beautiful friends, it's Mili here. I am a certified life coach and an NLP master. And today's video is how to control your emotions or how to become a boss of your emotions. One of the biggest tools helping me to deal with my emotions has been to write them down. Also, the way that you allow yourself to self-talk out loud. I love to talk to myself. This helps me to bring self-awareness and clarity uh, in terms of the situation with which I'm dealing right now. It helps me to understand the root of the issue and how can I handle it like a warrior of light, not like a mean person. If at some point I feel a mercy of my emotions, I will stop and I will ask myself, I will insist from myself answers. I'm not going to suppress these emotions. On the contrary, I will ask myself for an adequate answer. For example, why do I feel so overwhelmed today? What specifically triggers that emotion inside of me? From here, I can work back towards of the sequences of events and thoughts which brings me to the emotion I'm right now in. Let's start with practical examples so you can apply ASAP in your life. Number one, lovely people, take accountability. Teach other people how to approach you. Ask yourself, how many times have you told someone that his or her actions makes you feel a certain way. For example, you can say, I was in pain when you act, express yourself specifically, what was the action that triggers pain inside of you from the certain person. Consider also that people act in a certain way based on different influences in their life that differ from your own. It could be family-based, upbringing, childhood environments, as well as educational system, way of understanding and beliefs of life. With that being said, it is very important to voice yourself, but in a way which is assertive, clear, direct, straight to the point, asking for specific examples and providing specific examples when somebody and if somebody asks you for. That's how you can clear yourself, you can make yourself aware so you can easily control your emotions and level of stress. Number two lovely people, label your emotions. Right before you can change how you feel, First, you need to understand yourself what specifically you experience. Are you nervous? Do you experience disappointment? Are you sad? Keep in mind that sometimes anger keeps us vulnerable, like for example shame or embarrassment. Labeling your emotions and how you specifically feel can take a lot of the stink out of the emotion. It can also support the reframing process inside of you, how you see different emotions. That's how we reframe the process of our mindset. With that being said, number three of how to control our emotions and how to become a boss of our emotion is reframe your thoughts. Your emotions affect the way you perceive events in your life. Let's say that you're feeling anxious today and you're receiving an email from your boss that says he wants to see you right away. You might assume that you're getting fired. Why? Because the state of emotions right now that you're in is calling anxiousness. If, however, you're feeling excited and joyful when you receive the same email from your boss, your first thought in this case will be reverse. You might thought you're going to be promoted or at least congratulated for your effort and efficiency that you bring to the company. You see, 
the way you reframe your thoughts and the way you reframe how you feel in that specific moment triggers the outcome of your existence and the events that happen in your life. Consider the emotional filter you're seeing the world around you. Then reframe your thoughts and emotions in order to see the world in a more realistic way, which eventually will start serves you. And the last tip of how you can control your emotions in order to become a boss of your emotions is create a mantra. Create your unique mantra. I know guys, it is much more easier to say, man, enjoy life, allow yourself to feel more, to think less, and all this beautiful goody stuff, but pretty much hard to do it. I will give you a practical example with myself. Let's say that at some point I start feeling anger or upset for something in my day-to-day -day life. If I find myself in that low vibrational emotional state and I'm not able to remove myself as quick as I would like, I connect with my mantra. I have few mantras by the way, so right now I'm going to share them with you. I really hope that this will bring you some clarity. Also, you can start manifesting them in your life or you can make it sustainable for you in a way that will serve you to your better self. My mantra for work when the work becomes a lot and I cannot do it all together is I am one employee. This company or this place or this shop or whatever you're working, they are hiring you as a one employee. Your salary is as one employee. Your contract is for one employee. So I work as one person. I do not carry more than I can handle. Or if I decided to carry more, this should serve me as well. It could be in a monetary way, it could be in a personal way, or it could be in a way that will upbring me in the future position. So I will get promoted. Basically, we are searching for that golden zone that we as a personality, as an employee, will benefit from work the same that our employer benefits from us. Is that makes me less important or insufficient? Hell no! This shows Millie is self-aware and reliable both for herself and for us as an employment. Indeed, baby, absolutely correct. That's what we want to send as an intention outside to our employer. The next mantra is my mantra for love. Me as a person, maybe because I'm a Scorpio, my zodiac is Scorpio, Scorpio are very, very intense zodiac, even though it's written in the internet that we are the most sexual zodiac out there, this is true, however, we're pretty much monogamy, we love sexuality, we love and accept that intimacy, but also we would like to share it with the person of our interest and when we are with one person, we're committed there and we love with entire of our heart because we are very much a reliable partner and one that you can be sure that will be with you until the end. When I'm in relationship, even though I love to be 100% myself into the relationship, I also control my emotions in a way that I'm not taking responsibility for the way the other person acts towards me. And for that, guys, I needed so many years to understand that whatever I put outside nobody guarantee that will come back to me at one point from that certain person but what is certain is that what i put outside the same energy will come back at some point from somebody so basically my mantra for love is allowing me to be purely there but at the same time 
to remind individual in the relationship. That's how I become sufficient for myself. And the last one is mantra. If somebody blames you or hates you or shows you low vibrational state of mind, I've always say to myself, is this specific person matters? Like, from how many days do you know him? Why do you take so personal somebody else's words? Does this word serve you in some way? I really try to decode and to observe the person via body language, via uh, his intentions, how he acts, what are his words, and then I start to make conclusions for myself. I do not take feedbacks from people who has zero understanding about my life, about what's going on in my life, they do not be in my shoes, they have no idea where are my blisters are and how I handle each and every situation in my life. So basically those kind of people, they do not have place in my life and I really do not care what they say, how they say it or why they say it. This was everything from me, lovely people. Thank you very much for your time spent on my video. Subscribing for Militza Mind Voyages, you're entering a magical and lovely world of love, wisdom and trust and you're supporting me beyond. Hit that like button, spread the love and I hope to see you in my next video. Mwah.